Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gabe Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show. My name is Vincent M. Wales. With me is Gabe Howard and, this time, Michelle Hammer. Now, you probably don't know this, but the two of them have another show without me which isn't really too cool, but they agreed to be on this show and we can talk about all of that. So, hi everybody, welcome. Hello, I, you know, I also let you be the sole host for this episode and I have relegated myself to guest status, which you haven't caught on yet is actually of higher status because our guests are the most important part of the Psych Central Show podcast. Oh, I know that, they yeah, are. that's true. That's and true. now I'm a guest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I picked up on it. Michelle, this is your first time here. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. This is so nice. I'm loving where we are. I wish we could like be in somewhere this nice all the time. I'm loving it. Did yeah, not know it was an option. Because <laughs> your show, your show, A Bipolar, a Schizophrenic, and a Podcast, is not recorded from the comforts of your own home, is it? No. <laughs> no. No, no, not at all. It's recorded uh, after midnight in a vacant location. And vacant just means empty. I, I, I think maybe we picked a, a poor choice of words. That is the definition of the word, yes. <laughs> we, we, have, we have yet to be in like an abandoned warehouse or like an old morgue or something, although I, I suspect it's coming. We're usually inside at like a closed like restaurant or coffee shop. Yeah, we've been, we've been in like places in Chinatown. We've been at some closed breweries near Rikers Island. Like, that, that was very cool. Yeah, that was fun. I like that place. But that's what we do. Yeah, there, there's no video conferencing. There, there's no stay at home. There's no connect from across the country. Uh, it's a completely different style of show and we record differently to, to sort of, I don't know, to, it was just an idea I had and nobody was around to stop me and now it's stuck. And that's how it goes with you. Yeah. Okay. So we're here to talk about your show. Gabe, why did you want to have another show without me? <laughs> <laughs> it, the Psych Central Show podcast was started, you know, a year and a half ago, a, a long, long time. And we didn't know what to expect. We, we really didn't. I, I, I feel very comfortable telling the listeners that we never thought that it would, it would turn into this. We were hoping to do a great show that engaged a few hundred people and help them understand mental illness, mental health, and psychology. That, that's, that's what we wanted. And here we are a year and a half later, you know, top 10 on iTunes in the health category, award-winning, thousands upon thousands of downloads weekly. And the show morphed into a very educational, tight, talk radio style format featuring guest experts. And honestly, that meant that I couldn't talk as much and I didn't like that. Our listeners, however, liked it a great deal. They did. They did. It really makes more sense for the show to highlight the experts and to ask them questions that they can explain to our audience in layman's terms. But I had stuff to say. The original design of the show had every other episode holding you know, conversations between us, you know, about our opinions and, and getting into the world what it feels like to live with mental illness. Well, actually, at first, it was even, even more just you and me uh, and, and fewer guests when we first started. And then yeah. we increased to every other show, and now it's almost exclusively guests. So, yeah. That's, ex that's exactly right. And I realized that, man, it would be nice if those opinions could still get out there, but it's going to need to be in a different format, in a different way. And I also realized, which was a great growing moment for me, that, you know, Gabe's view of mental illness is not the only view. And I, I wanted a co-host that had a different experience. And by different experience, I don't mean just a different diagnosis. I mean a different age, gender, location, just somebody who was completely different. Vin, I love you, but you know, we're both, we're both middle-aged men that were born in the same small town. <laughs> There's not a lot of diversity in that's what fair. we do, and that's why the guests are so very valuable. So I stumbled upon Michelle, almost literally, I tripped over her. She's so tiny, <laughs> and I'm so giant, and it, you know, we kind of clicked, and, and here we are. And that, that's really 
why I came up with the show and, and how it was born. And she agreed to do it for like no money. So that was very helpful as well. You just kind of brought it up and I was like, wow, this guy really wants to do a podcast with me. He like really, really does. Like really does really badly. Okay, sure. That is not how it happened at all. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it that is. is. That is a straight up lie. <laughs> that is not a lie. That is not a lie. I, I pitched her the idea for the podcast. It, we didn't know the name or anything. We, we decided on the name together, but I pitched her the idea for the podcast. And she said, and I quote, nobody listens to podcasts. <laughs> and I was like, I, 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 I am the host of a podcast already that has, uh, that's very successful. And she's like, well... Nah, nah, podcasts aren't a thing. And she goes, and besides, this is my favorite part. She what? said, and besides, people are always telling me to shut up. <laughs> and I said, Michelle, that's why you need a podcast. And then I started sending her links to other podcasts and, and our show. And so finally she listened to one episode and she wrote back. She's like, okay, we can do this, I guess. It was the most... <laughs> It was so sad. I don't remember any of this. I can't believe you have like this entire text message thread like memorized. I don't remember you, any of that. You did not. Okay. To make sure that people understand that I'm not a liar, you do acknowledge that you did not agree when I first brought it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I had to talk you into it. Yes. To be yes. fair, Michelle, when he first brought up the idea of me being on a podcast with him, I said, people listen to podcasts. <laughs> See? So, so yeah, you and I, we connect. I get it. Look, I don't know what to say. I suckered both of you into this and, and it's going to, it's, it's turning out well on both ends. Podcasting is, is where the future is. You know, I'm sure the very first person that said, Hey, I'm going to be famous because I'm going to be on this thing called television. Uh, probably got a lot of sideways looks from radio stars that are like, no, 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 no. Radio is where it's at. And, and all those people got left behind. I don't, I don't think that know. podcasts like, are going to take over. What's, what's a television? What's a television? Vin and I's generation, we watch TV. You, you watch announced? Netflix. You watch Netflix on, on a monitor. Did you have antennas with antenna rods? Yes, actually. Uh, yeah, before my hometown got, got cable, yeah, everybody had an antenna. I it's had an antenna too. It's very sad. <laughs> yeah, you're not antenna. as young as you think you are. I know. <laughs> I, I pretend. I pretend. <laughs> I oh, that's adorable. <laughs> All right. So let's get to the meat of this thing. So the show is called a bipolar, a schizophrenic and a podcast. And I kind of know which one of you has bipolar. I'm assuming therefore Michelle that you have schizophrenia and you both have the podcast. Now, well, this wait, has... I, you've actually got that wrong. This is, you know, this is the kind of, you don't understand how this works. Michelle is actually the podcast. <laughs> oh, and every I week we, podcast. every Download. week, Yes, every, every week we publish a schizophrenia, all right? Just, we don't, we don't like labels, uh, all right? I just, I learned that from her generation that labels yeah. are bad. Labels. So Michelle is the podcast, the show is schizophrenic, and I'm, I'm still bipolar because I've made a brand out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody gets that because only we get that because we talk about that all the time. <laughs> no, because people get mad that, like, I say schizophrenic instead of person with schizophrenia. Like, somebody emailed me, but their email was, like, chick something or other. And then in the email, I wrote kind of, like, isn't chick a derogatory word for a woman? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, the whole person first language, which you're alluding to there. Gabe and I have had discussions about that. We are not big fans of it at all, and clearly you're not either. Share your opinions of it. Flat out, what do you think? I mean, honestly, can I call myself what I want to call myself? Like, I'm also a brunette. Well, you can call yourself a podcast if you want. I mean, I'm a brunette. I mean, like, I'm an Ashkenazi. Like, I'm a person of Judaism. Like, what do I say? I'm a person of, am I, then I am a, am I a person with schizophrenia or a person with schizophrenia? Can we get into that argument? How do you pronounce it? Is it schizophrenia or schizophrenia? Can I just call myself what I want? Let's just all be happy. I love every you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Let's all get along. That's what I have to say. That would be way too simple. We get it a lot with, with the show. We, we've gotten a few emails about it and, and the, the show continues to build, but people don't like the idea that it's called a bipolar, a schizophrenic and a podcast, which, which made somebody quip 
what are you going to call it? A person living with bipolar disorder, a person living with schizophrenia, and a digital file that's downloaded through your phone every week? <laughs> and I was just like, I don't think that's going to fit on the logo. Um, this was not our intention, though. Michelle and I went through so many names. I, I mean, and you should have... So many, so many. <laughs> It, it was it was brutal. It, it was brutal trying to find the name, and we just couldn't really land on one that described the show for what we wanted to. We were talking about the format of the show, which is recording in various places. And Michelle said, "Where are we going to find people that are going to let us record?" And I said, "You know, pizza places are always going to be down with this, and we get pizza." And then I remembered Nathan Fillion's original show was two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. And I thought, why don't we just call this a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast? Because at its core, that's really what it is. And Michelle said, "That's a stupid name." <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I was like, "That's so dumb." She she did she did not dig the name, but it stuck. I it just it it was the best of the worst. Like an well, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious about one thing about that story, Gabe, which is why were you thinking about Nathan Fillion exactly? <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I really was thinking the same exact thing. Like what like like were you watching Firefly? I mean, yes, always. I love Firefly. Uh, no, it just it just popped in my head. I, I don't know what made me think of it, but I did think of that show. I mean, I don't know. Next question. All right, Gabe, not to put too fine a point on it, but everybody knows you, so shut up for a little bit. <laughs> if you can stay shut up for about five whole minutes, I'll give you a dollar. No reaction. That's great. So, Michelle, how yes. did you and Gabe meet? I mean, for um, real. Actually, I think we met at Healthy Voices last year on the very last day. I okay. think I met Gabe. I really think that's how I met Gabe. And then I met Gabe on Facebook, I think. And then I so, emailed Gabe, said, do you want to collaborate? And then we, we talked more. <laughs> I don't even know. And then I was on that, his live show. And then we were friends. And then he would Facebook message me, text message me, email me. Gabe just emails, texts, and Facebook messages all day long. Oh, I know. It's the best thing in the world because you never really know what you're going to expect. <laughs> but a lot of times it says hugs, which is very sweet. Oh, There's I, always a I hugs don't, in there. I don't, I don't get the hugs. You don't get I, the I, hugs? It's okay. It's, it's okay. Oh, Vin, I'm so sorry. Well, you can send me the hugs then. All right, I'm going to lose the dollar. That is not, that is, that is, that is, that is barely what happened. One, I don't remember meeting you at Healthy Voices because if you remember, you sent me an email and you're like, we met at Healthy Voices. And I was like, and I said, I don't remember you. And then you sent me a picture of us at Healthy Voices saying, see, we're in the same picture. And that's also when I remembered, oh, that's where I met Rachel Starr, another guest on this show who I thought I met six months later. So I, the, the, the first Healthy Voices was incredible, and I don't remember it, but it is true. And it clearly caused some traumatic memory issues for you. So uh, Apparently, but I love the part where you make it sound like I stalked you. When you start, you're like, watch my WebMD video. Look at my, my store because I sell clothes. You just get, let's collaborate, Gabe. I've got some idea. Don't, don't pretend. I just kept deleting oh messages God. from you because I was you like, I don't. Not. No, you I don't, were not. Just, no, 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 you were not. You were you're not just, deleting messages from me. That's, I never okay. delete anything, but I wasn't reading them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liar. Liar. <laughs> Let's do a podcast. Let's do a podcast. A podcast. A podcast. Okay, kids. Oh. Michelle, let's learn more about you because we already know about Gabe. I understand you have a clothing line. Tell me about that. That's right. I do. Uh, my clothing line is Schizophrenic NYC. You can find it at schizophrenic.nyc. It's basically a mental health clothing line. What does that mean? When it's really just um, clothing lines, um, pretty much awareness apparel, I like to call it. And I'm just using the medium of artwork and clothing to just spread awareness. It's really I, get, I get the pun there. Yeah. Awareness, because you wear it. You know what? I didn't, you know what, Vin? You can, you can use it. You can use yeah, it. I will. I will. But it, it's, it's just to give people to start a conversation about mental health, because in New York City, the statistic is that one in five New Yorkers has a mental health issue, but no one talks about it because of all the stigma. So really, if it's so common, why is there so much stigma? So really, if, if we can just talk about it more, 
if everyone was just more open, there wouldn't be so much stigma. So I'm just really trying to start a conversation. Gotcha. It appears to me, because I'm looking at you in video right now, that you seem to be wearing one of your own shirts. What's it say? It says, don't be paranoid. You look great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Evan. Don't be paranoid. You look great. Gabe, you, though. Yeah, we know. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. So you being the, the schizophrenic third of the show. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. How were you diagnosed? Give me your history. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, I guess I don't even know when I got it, but I found out I had it when I was 22. When I was 18, I was told I was bipolar, but I found out I was schizophrenic when I was 22. I got a new doctor, was more honest and open, and then just, you know, kind of rode the wave of finding different medications that worked, finding stuff that didn't work. And I mean, I worked at a bunch of different jobs, things didn't always work out. And then I kind of started working for myself, things got good. And then right now I take meds, I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I'm the happiest I've really ever been. So although I'm schizophrenic, I really do live a very good, grateful life. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, thank you. What do you do aside from the clothing line and this podcast? I work as like a graphic web designer, I can design you a website, I can design you a t-shirt, I can design you anything you want, pretty much. Well, Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> can you and she is not wrong. Michelle's actually being very, very humble here. You've worked for some pretty high-end websites. You've, you've had excellent internships. You're college educated in this. You live in New York City. You tell in your personal story that you were fired from eight jobs, but these were, these were eight jobs that you had in pretty high-end design. And I understand that schizophrenia played into this, but you know, you, you are immensely talented. Um, obviously, I know you can't say that yourself or everybody will know how conceited you are, but I, I, I wanted to point out that you're, you're not just like a graphic designer, like everybody that you know, downloads Photoshop, clicks around on it and uses the YouTube editor. Um, you're extremely talented. I mean, well, yeah, I, I do say all the time that, you know, I was fired from eight jobs, but I mean, I had a lot more jobs than that, than that, you know, just a lot of contracts that whatever, but from all the jobs that I've had, even like that I've worked there and I lost those jobs and everything from having all that experience in every bajillion different industry that I worked in, that's what taught me how to run my own business. That's why I can. That's why I learned everything. So it's like all that horrible stuff happened, but turned out to actually work in my favor. Okay. Now I understand you've had something to do with Rorschach art. Yes, yes, yes. Tell me about um, that. Um, the idea was behind like the Rorschach teas that I sell. It's, like, it's kind of like, um, you look at the regular plain black Rorschach test, like the unmedicated schizophrenic or just the schizophrenic might look at it in kind of a different perspective. So I took that test, I switched up the patterns and the colors, so never everyone's forced to look at it from a completely different perspective, getting you to think differently, starting a discussion, because only through discussion can you really try to end stigma. Okay, so is your yeah. show then, is the show about fighting stigma in a general way? Gabe, you can talk now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that, thank you. Go, Gabe, go. <laughs> It, it, yes and no, all at the same time. There's this, there's this idea that the only way that you can fight stigma is to, you know, hold up boring signs that say things like mentally ill people are people too and deserve rights. And that, that's true. I, I'm not saying that we have to stop advocating on a political level. In fact, I encourage it. I'm not saying that we need to stop holding rallies. And in fact, I encourage it. But one of the things that I want to see happen is that mental illness has a spot in mainstream culture that is accurate. And in my mind, my personality, as, as driven by how I was raised, where I came from, the things that I like, and heavily influenced by the fact that I have bipolar disorder, is a valid perspective. 
Michelle's perspective as somebody who grew up with mental illness, who lives with schizophrenia, who has challenges that other people don't face, is a very valid perspective. So our show is about us talking about how we see the world through the lens of living with mental illness. And I want people to listen to that and be entertained. I want people to laugh because they're funny. I want people to disagree with us. I want people to learn things that they didn't know. I don't particularly care what people get out of the show as long as when they're done, they have this basic idea that people are living with mental illness and creating something to put out in the world for other people to consume and those people aren't hurting anybody. Because right now, whenever we talk about mental illness publicly, it's always crisis, it's always violent, and it's always dangerous. So if people roll their eyes at us, that is, believe it or not, an upgrade. So in that way, I feel that it is very much mental health advocacy. But yeah, traditionally, no, it's a really cool show with a couple of goofballs who happen to live with mental illness and just have stuff to say and needed a platform. And it's our platform. Yeah, it's fun. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to record. It's a lot of fun to do. And it's like a lot of fun to, to know that people are listening to it. Including our moms. Yeah, including our moms. <laughs> who, that, texts that was... me, who texts me and, and says, I, I think I need to defend myself here. <laughs> so what do your moms think about the show having a mature rating? You know, we, we sort of got saddled with that because we wanted to talk about real life with mental illness and real life involves you know sex real life involves drug use real life involves making mistakes and we wanted to get you know the good the bad and the ugly out there and this makes some podcast platforms not to mention any particular fruit uncomfortable and they don't like the idea that you could talk about you know drug use, for example, without warning people. So we decided just to steer into the curve, put the mature rating on it, and you know, now we can swear a little, something that we don't do on this show ever, we don't do on the Psych Central Show podcast. We can swear a little, we can talk a little more how we would talk in real life. But, but listen, it's, if you watch the show Family Guy or you listen or you watch television at eight o'clock on any major network, you're gonna hear all the same words that you hear on our show. Uh, but it is a little more realistic. But thankfully, the giant fruit won't come after us. Oh, I thought we had a mature rating because I can't stop cursing. That, Could be that, cool. yeah, that's, that's, Could be I mean, cool. that's, that's the shorter version. <laughs> <laughs> I like her version better. All right, so we're talking about a show now that is entertaining, has a mature rating, doesn't use person-first language. Do you get any negative feedback about all these things? No. Oh, you are so wrong. <laughs> we have. We have gotten some, some negative feedback. I will admit that the controversy has been a lot lower than I expected. And controversy is probably too hard of a word. I, I expected to get a lot more pushback. We did get some pushback over the person-first language. A couple of people said that we're making light of living with mental illness. And a few people correctly I, I do want to state correctly pointed out that it's because we're well, because we got medical treatment and care and have good family support systems and have health insurance that we're able to be well enough to do a podcast and that some people suffering with Why mental illness. Wrong? It, I don't think they were saying it's wrong. I, I think that they wanted to make sure that we weren't excluding people who are sicker and that's not our intention. I will say that, Nobody has given us negative feedback that I feel has actually listened to the show. A lot of people have passed along negative feedback based on the advertising for the show or the description for the show. And that is very meaningful to me because people who are mocking what they don't know, you can't control them. Everybody has an opinion. The people who are listening to the show, they realize that Michelle and I are very fair and valid. We're not BSing anybody. We talk about how sick we were and how much help we needed. And I strongly feel, we strongly feel that that is a, that needs to be out there. It needs to be out there. Real life with mental illness needs to be out there. It needs to permeate the consciousness of our society because right now it hasn't. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the specifics of your show. You do not have guests, I understand. Yeah, never. In, in fact, you will be the, probably the only guest we ever have because you wanted a quid pro quo situation. 
So you're going to hang out with us in Chicago, which is going to be very, very cool. But yeah, the, the, the show is not set up for guests. What about the specific format of, of how the show goes? I mean, when, once you start, how does it stop? <laughs> Usually we get sick of one another. I'm just, I'm just like so done with him sometimes. Like, I'm just like, I'm done with you. Can we be done? I'm just done looking at you and I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I, the, I, I think I said I'm done 12 times because I'm just done. Yeah. That's, we pick our topics in advance, of course. You know, we, we go in with, with an outline for the show and we go in and we discuss these things. We make the points that we have inserted or, or you know, disagreements and jokes and, and things like that that come up. And we record all of this and that's the format. It's kind of like a talk show, except instead of featuring, you know, men or, or women or comedians or whatever, it's just a couple of mentally ill people. I mean, that, that's really what it is. It's, it's kind of like the view with mental patients. It's, it's really just us discussing topics and it, it does naturally come you know, to a conclusion. You really remind me of Joy Behar. I have no idea who that is. You don't even watch the view. So you don't no, you I talk just, about the view and you don't know anything about you're it. You're bringing up the view and you don't even know who Joy Behar is. I can't even believe you right now. I can't even, you don't know who Joy Behar is. I don't, I don't want to do a podcast with you anymore. And that's how things end. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, usually one of us reaches our limit and, and then we just move on and, and we edit it out. There's a lot of editing in our show. We, we let people know that. It, it's not live. It's, it's not a, a live show. We go through and then we edit it out later and the jokes that work stay in, the jokes that don't come out. Okay, some of the jokes that don't work stay in because I just really, really like them. We have a great producer and director who helps us a lot. His name is Vincent M. Wales. Um, he, is, he is key to the podcast Surviving. Um, so we we obviously thank you for that very much. But it's all of these things that come together to to make the show. And yeah, it's all recorded after midnight in a vacant location. Just so why is that? Why 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 vacant locations and why after midnight? Once again, sometimes things just pop into my head that sound really, really cool. But this one is cool because the best conversations happen after midnight. We all remember being kids and solving all of the world's problems at 3 a.m. while eating pizza. And that's what we're trying to capture here. That's the vibe of the show. The vacant locations is just because we wanted to move it around. I mean, different places have different vibes and feels and we don't want the show to get stale and we don't want to have the same conversation over and over again because we're looking at the same four walls and adding that element really, really helped. Plus Michelle and I don't live as far away from each other as you know, we do Vin uh, New York to Ohio is not really that bad. And it just opened up a, a lot of options for us. And I, I just really feel that it gave the show some feel some some awesomeness but bottom line michelle didn't talk me out of it which <laughs> makes me pose the question to you michelle when when i suggested this why why did you go along with it i mean do you think it's cool i mean i i guess it's i guess it's cool it's fun it's go different places meet new people every time just by going hi can we record in here oh yes okay cool and you get to argue over whether it's a convenience store or a bodega it's a bodega. It's a convenience store. It's a convenience store. No, it's a bodega. Listen, I, I still don't know what a bodega is. I know what a convenience store is. The bodegas and the convenience stores sell all the same things. Don't try to make New York sound cooler because you can't call a convenience store a convenience store. You yeah. have excellent pizza. Well, yeah. Bagels are when, pretty good when too. Ohio has what? White Castle. Corn. We have corn. <laughs> White Castle. <laughs> and White Castle. We do have White Castle. Okay, how do we find the show? You are you are where online? Everywhere. Oh, are, yeah, any your favorite podcast player will absolutely carry a bipolar or schizophrenic in a podcast. We're also available on psychcentral.com slash BSP, which is bipolar schizophrenic podcast, or wherever your fine podcasts are sold. Yeah, but they're free. They are free. Well, thanks very much, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Michelle, thanks for being on the show, and, and maybe we can have you on another time. Gabe, of course, thank you for sharing facts about your other show that I'm not on. But you're going to be there. We're going to record you, and we're going to plant these next to each other. So if you are listening to this show, Monday is when the next episode will come out. We, we, we have some time to record it. 
a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast on Monday, so it's like four days from now, will feature Vin as a guest. We're going to be recording in a vacant location somewhere in Chicago, because we'll all be in Chicago together to do the Psych Central I, show live. I have never been to Chicago before, so this is going to be fun. It is going to be fun. And we just need to find a vacant location to let three people now record. And it'll be cool. So check that out on Monday. It'll just be a few days from now. Excellent. Any, uh, any parting words, either of you? Farewell. Be well. Love well. Do well. Shut All right, up, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And remember, you can get one week of free, convenient, affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere by visiting betterhelp.com slash psychcentral. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to The Psych Central Show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the Internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at gabehoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counsellor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at vincentmwales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email talkback at psychcentral.com.